Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for health and for life. We thank you, God, that when we read in your word that in the last days, peerless times will come. Times of trouble, times of sorrow. And God, we are grateful that you've allowed us to live to see all of these events. And God, now, may we be awakened and may we be stirred to draw nigh to thee as we see the fulfillment of your prophecy. Bless our time and study together. Bless Pastor Winston. Bless this wonderful audience and bless our friends online that this will be a time of not only study and understanding, but a time of personal yes. revival. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Pastor Winston. So this will be a part two of Israel at War. And we're honored again that you're here. I'm going to get right into it. Uh, we talked about this in depth, our first roundtable. Uh, we talked about the attack. Uh, Hamas has deemed this attack Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. The Al-Aqsa refers to the mosque uh, that you find there on the Temple Mount. And obviously it's been well over a week now and everything is developing um, hour by hour, really minute by minute. And this is a date that you'll remember, October the 7th, you'll speak that word, that name, that date, um, synonymously with days like September the 11th, December the 7th, and uh, no doubt it forever will change the Middle East. So what do we know about this attack? Uh, what, what has been revealed that we didn't know last time that we met? And you can see the, the massive initiative that Hamas took upon itself to harm as many people as it possibly could, kill as many people as it possibly could. And now we have detailed video of every single attack uh, from that, that horrible day, every city that was attacked. Um, and now the Israeli government is, is still processing even that attack. I think the first time we met, the first numbers were over a thousand Hamas fighters, terrorists, armed to the teeth with explosives. Right. As Pastor Ralph mentioned, now we know that they had arms from Iran, that's confirmed. They had arms from uh, North Korea, that's confirmed. That's not hearsay. We have seen the footage, them holding up the munitions from North Korea in Iran. Uh, one of the IDF lieutenant generals held up a mortar round, and he showed on the round in Farsi where it had been made in Iran. And I think the thing that's important to realize is they said that this was the first time that Hamas had ever had possession of such technologically advanced munitions. That's correct. So it's evidence that, Haran, that Iran absolutely did back and sponsor this specific right. attack. You will not hear that in much mainstream media. Anything you'd like to add about that, well, the attack, since we uh, knew? I think uh, more, but. one of the IDF reports I read says they estimate uh, 2,400 terrorists crossed the border, breached the fence in 80 different places. But one of the uh, hidden factors of the attack was that it was on a high holy day. Right. And it was on Sukkot and also on Shabbat. And because of that, if you're a religious Jew, you do not use your radio, your television, your cell phone, or your phone. No internet. Or no internet, nothing uh, from sundown uh, on the Sabbath till sundown Saturday, and that was in a dark time for communication. And so they breach the fence, they come in. Why? Because there's not going to be any communication in these 22 villages and cities that they encroached in, and that added to the horror and the tragedy of the death and destruction. So over 2,000 armed terrorists coming in, 81 different spots in the wall all at once, on Sukkot, on, on that, that Sabbath day. It's why you see so many deaths. Now, this is new since our last time we were together. This is not just an attack on Israelis, but there are Austrians dead and missing. Brazilians, there's folks from Ireland, Italy, Uzbekistan, Mexico, Moldova, Portugal, uh, the United States, and this number has changed since this was published. In this publication, it says 18 murdered, 21 missing. That number has gone up. This is not just against Israelis or Jews, uh, but there were, there were devastating videos shown 
of, of folks from Nepal who have no, no fight no. In, in this entire conflict who were executed for being on a, an Israeli kibbutz working and, and serving. And uh, some of the video is, is not even appropriate to, to, to view. It's, it's horrific beyond words. Um, and so this was an international attack right. uh, on the international community. And, and, and some of our own are still to this day uh, being flown home in caskets, American citizens who were there <coughs> in that part of it. <coughs> now, we know, we know now how tragic <coughs> the loss of life is, how overwhelming, how sad the loss of life is. Here's a picture of a family that lived in one of the kibbutz. All, all members of this family, the mom, the dad, and the three kids. And there you see them in their body bags outside of their home. The, this entire family was killed in their home. They're not members of the IDF. They didn't have weapons. They were enjoying Sukkot. They were enjoying Shabbat in their house when Hamas came in. Now, a few of these pictures are, are, are graphic. We won't show what we could show, but I do want you to see this picture and it's quite disturbing, just fair warning. This is inside one of the bedrooms of one of the children inside the kibbutz. When the attack happened, this young girl, I've, 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 what I've read is that she was somewhere between the ages of eight and 10, was in her bedroom, and she was coloring her coloring book, laying in the floor like most little girls do on a Saturday morning. And Hamas walked into her house, executed every member of her family, walked into her bedroom. She's there on the, the floor, startled about all the noise, and they executed that young girl. Her little Mary Jane shoes, her teddy bear, her Disney uh, princess coloring book in Hebrew is there. And then Miranda, my wife, noticed when we saw this picture, we were overcome with emotion. Yeah. And Miranda said, Winston, look at what she was coloring. And if you'll look, it was a pomegranate a symbol of Jewish righteousness, 613 seeds. It tides straight to, to the 613 thou shalt and thou shalt nots of the, of the Jewish faith. And so we're not talking about just IDF soldiers that, that lost their life. Those, those lives are important and no, no doubt we don't want any IDF soldier to die. But these were entire families. Here's, here's a trusted source, Arsen Otrovsky, an entire family, Tamar, Yonatan, their six-year-old daughters, Shahara and Arbel, and their four-year-old son, Omer, they were all slaughtered by Hamas terrorists who infiltrated kibbutz near Oz just because they were Jews. And that whole family is gone. Some families had mom and dad and grandparents inside the, the house together for holiday, and, and they're having trouble. There are still hundreds of bodies being held. That's the last report I saw, that there are potentially up to 200 more bodies still being held for processing that have even either been burned beyond recognition or the entire family has been wiped out and they're looking for family members in other parts of Israel or in other parts of the world to come claim the bodies. So the number 1400, no doubt, will go up. That number is not done from the attack on October the 7th. That's going to change. It's going to change. And, and here you go, just more horrific things. And I think it's important, church, that we embrace just how evil evil really is. This is a child's bedroom and there's his little toy trucks and all of the things that your kids and grandkids like to play with. And he never made it out of his bed. No. And you can't even begin to describe the heartache that the, the Jewish people, the Israeli people feel. Hundreds and hundreds of their countrymen slaughtered. Here's a, a picture that grabbed my heart. This is two IDF soldiers in that house where the little girl had been executed coloring her picture book. And after they had taken her body to the ambulance, they had to come back inside. And one of the Israeli soldiers just laid on the other and had to cry. It's, it's, it's unspeakable. Right. And yes, our heart mourns and it grieves because these are our friends and, and we love the Jew and our heart is connected directly to Israel and its people but church, I would mourn, I would weep in the same way if this was in Uganda, if this was in Canada. An eight-year-old little girl coloring her, her pictures, it, it's hard to, to fathom just how dark and wicked uh, it, it really you have to, to be and how far you have to go.
to go down it's that road. It's actually a, a choice that the world's making on human behavior. Yes, That's sir. not humanity. No, sir, it's not. And so, obviously, the attack, you, we, we have to move on past the attack because there's, if you will, work to be done. There's more to understand. It's emotional, it's hard, lots of tears. And we'll continue to cry those tears. But now we have to go into a war footing, okay? And I'm representing the heart of, of what I see and what I've talked to, to people that are in Israel. We're at war now, okay? As one person put it on the phone to me, a Jewish person put it to me on the phone a couple of days ago, I, I, I've cried a little, but I haven't mourned yet because I'm at war. Right. The time for mourning will come. And here's part of the reason why. Uh, so many are still uh, in Gaza, Israeli citizens and American citizens, still kidnapped, still in possession of Hamas. This is one of the young girls. She's, you know, there's no way this little child is, is older than two years old, 18 months. Right. Her whole family has been killed, mother, father, brothers and sisters. And Hamas decided to spare her life and take her as a hostage. And in my hand here with Pastor Ralph, I'm going to split this with you. You take that stack and I've got a stack. I have page after page, and we'll set these out for you to look at. This is over 100 pages of confirmed people that are still missing in Gaza. In my hand is a 34-year-old mother with her 4-year-old and her 2-year-old daughter, Doran, Aviv, and Raz. And they're missing. And this is why we can say that we are absolutely 100% in a war footing. And we still have American citizens among these who have, who have been kidnapped. So that is, that is the escalation uh, potential. Not only is the attack still really being uh, executed in the fact that so many have been kidnapped, but this is why Israel, the IDF, must respond and must go into Gaza to get these people back, to bring them home. And, and we must pray that God would spare these lives that they could come home. Well, you know, what I'm struggling with is not only this horror and this story, but how many Americans have processed that we lost the most Americans since 9-11 yeah. with a terror attack on October 7th. Yes, sir. The most Americans killed by a terrorist group since 9-11 happened on October That's the right. 7th. And we're in the streets protesting for the people that kill the Americans. It's, 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 it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. And I agree with, with the Senator from Florida that if those folks who are cheering the death of all of these people and they have a Hamas flag in their hand, or as we saw uh, in the streets, I think it was in Canada and Toronto, the flag uh, of, of Afghanistan terrorist that you know so well from the news, Right. Uh, they had uh, ISIS flags. They had ISIS flags, but they also had uh, the flag of Al Qaeda yeah. in the in the streets of Toronto. And I agree with what the Florida senator said. He said if they're here and they're on a student visa, then the visa should be revoked immediately. Absolutely. Their passport should be torn up in front of them and then sent home. Right. If you hate America, if you hate America, go away. Yeah. The Taliban is not welcome here. Amen. That's right. It, does, it doesn't it, make sense. It doesn't make sense. Self-preservation. And so here you have in front of you this picture on the screen. I want to go back to it for just a second because this is the, the torture element, the, the mind warfare. This is, a, this is a Hamas sympathizer or a member of Hamas who is with this Israeli child that's been kidnapped. Now, if you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner of that first image, you see the symbol for TikTok. His girlfriend is recording a video. These are screen grabs that I found uh, of his girlfriend posting this on her TikTok to send to the world, including this little girl's family that remains, as another element of torture that we have your loved one. Yeah. And it's hard to understand, and it's hard to put all of this into context. Unbelievable. Now, the second thing that we talked about last time uh, was the potential for escalation. And man, there is a lot to discuss as it pertains to what has happened even since last week, the potential for escalation. Pastor Ralph talked about it uh, earlier today. 
Um, and I, I don't want to get bogged down here because there's some other elements that we need to talk about. But, but be very aware that what we said about Hezbollah in the north, you have Lebanon. If you're looking at a map of Israel, you have Lebanon to the left. Right. You have Syria to the right. Hezbollah is much more better prepared for a full ground war than Hamas has ever been. They're actually equipped with Iranian precision guided missiles. They have, they have more military capability than, than Hamas has ever possessed. They have, they have nothing pushing against them training. They have a direct fund from the Ayatollah in Iran, and they are capable. They have their own special forces unit, if that helps you understand uh, just how capable these people are. Actually, uh, it's hard to imagine, Pastor Winston, but Hezbollah is more militarily equipped <clears throat> with missiles, mortars, and uh, army, and even the individual soldiers' equipment than a lot of Western armies. They're bigger than several countries with the might and strength of what they have. So obviously we're paying attention to that. We said that last week, be watching the North. A second front could open. That could still happen even today. But I want to I want to introduce you to a few people. Uh, this is Ambassador and permanent representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran to the United Nations in New York. This man is in New York City today, okay? His name is Amir Saeed Irvani. And he, he has put out some very disturbing statements, the permanent mission of the Islamic Republic of Iran to UN in the United States. This is in New York. This is where their office is. This was one of their responses to the attack. The success, all right, he's talking about October the 7th, the terrorist attack. The success of this operation was the fact that it was a surprise, which makes it the biggest failure of the Israeli regime security organization during the life of the uprising regime. They find it very difficult to accept that the intelligence community is being narrated that they were defeated by a Palestinian group. So they are celebrating... This is, this is out of the, the permanent mission to the UN from the Islamic Republic of Iran. The picture that was attached to this statement was a burning Merkava tank in which the entire tank crew from, from Israel had been executed by Hamas and is set on fire. This was their response to the attack. Uh, this is one that was just a few days ago. The Israeli apartheid war crime and genocide are not halted immediately the situation could spiral out of control and ricochet far-reaching consequences. Okay, this is, the, this is the Islamic Republic government. These are not wild factions within Iran. These are not people who do not speak on behalf of the government. These are the elected officials, the assigned officials from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine that that's allowed uh, that it would be allowed within the United Nations to have someone, a part of that council, who would celebrate such atrocities against thousands of Israeli citizens. So how could it be possible that the White House would declare that Iran had nothing to do with it? How could it be possible it's a fallacy. That, that we would remove the sanctions from, it, uh, from Iran, that every seven days they get a billion dollars from China buying Iranian oil? Right. So it's not a $6 billion controversy we're talking about where you paid a bribery to get some people back, but add to that a billion dollars every seven days because we took the sanctions back. And, and then yesterday, the leader of their military, the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard, he made the statement 10 days after the massacre of October 7th that the only thing that will solve and bring peace to the world is to remove the cancerous tumor of Israel from the world map. This is Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iran. His name is Hussein Amir Abdullani. And this man is, is, is very, very evil. Uh, here's his original statement in Farsi. Uh, it's translated for you there in English underneath. I'm sorry, in English underneath. He says, in response to the October 7th attack, tonight, we talked with Mr. Joseph Burrell, the European Union's foreign policy official, about the latest developments in Palestine. I consider the resistance operation, he's talking about the terrorist attack, 
I considered the resistance operation to be a natural and legitimate response. Those are, those are his words. He's talking about the execution of that little girl in her bedroom coloring a pomegranate out of her coloring book is a, is a natural and legitimate response to the extreme and criminal actions of the, there it is again, Zionist regime, and that the, def, the, the definite result of Netanyahu's extremism against the homeland of Palestinian nation. Uh, it, it, I have a hard time putting all of that into context in my own mind and my own heart, how that could be called uh, a, a, a legitimate response, a natural right. response. But we told you last week, be paying attention to Iran, be paying attention to what they say, be paying attention to the moves they make. This gentleman here that we just talked about has been all over the Middle East. He's on a tour. He's yep. on a tour. And that tour uh, included some, some big players in the world uh, as far as uh, military and, and the Muslim world. And you say, well, surely Pakistan wants to remain neutral in this. No. No. This is on the floor of the Pakistani parliament. This is a female member of the Pakistani parliamentary organization. And I, I played this. I listened to it. I, I read the transcripts from three or four different sources. I, this is confirmed, 100%. She said in her speech, imploring the prime minister of uh, Pakistan, our atom bomb is to defend Muslims. We call on our prime minister to convey to Israel to end war in Gaza against Palestine or else we will erase Israel from the face of the earth. The entire world, every single major power, every single major nuclear power, everything is changing. This changes everything. Well, uh, think what she just said there on the floor of the parliament in Pakistan. She said, we have an atomic bomb. They do. And we know how to use it. And I'm calling on the prime minister to tell Israel, you've got one choice. Do what the Islamic world tells you or we're going to eradicate you from the face of the earth. Psalms 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones, the Jew. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's the declaration. And God said in his word right before Jesus comes back, these prophecies, remember, remember 25% of your Bible is prophecy. And prophecy is not in here for sensationalism. It's not in here to do a TV special. Prophecy is in here to comfort the church that the Bible's real. That when you read the prophecies, that you will be comforted. That Jesus said, when you see all these things, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And he said, when you see that day approaching, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. He's encouraging us. That's what prophecy is about. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. He said, don't grow weary in what? Well doing. That means going to church, serving the Lord together, and telling other people about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great peacemaker. So that's what God's doing. He's giving you that understanding that when you see these events, it's not an accident. It's a handful on purpose to awaken the church. And, and listen to me. If you really believe the Lord's coming, you'll want to do one of three things right off the bat. Number one, if I really believe this book and I believe what Pastor Winston's been showing and what we're experiencing, I'm going to get right with God. This isn't the time to play church. Number two, if I believe it's real, I, I'm going to make sure I'm right with my fellow man. This is not the time to hold a grudge, be mad at somebody. I told a preacher yesterday, I said, I feel sorry for preachers that are going to spend their last few hours on planet Earth shooting at some other preacher or playing a religious yes, game. Sir. And the world dying and going to hell, and you spent time wasting your energy and print and, and uh, all of your money on trying to take somebody else out when the enemy's the devil. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to be right with the Lord, right with each other. Number three, if I really believe this, then guess what? 
Mike was just talking to me. He invited a friend to come to lunch today. And that friend's not saved. That's what you'll do. If you believe he's coming, you'll try to reach some lost people before he comes. Let's put this picture up. It's very important that you understand just the simple ballistic missile capability of Iran. You can see that red circle, just how far it goes, uh, the circumference there. Israel is covered by just about every munition that Iran has in its capability. Right. Um, it goes all the way there to the middle of Africa. These are just simple ballistic missiles. We talked about this last week. This is the news release from, uh, from the headquarters of uh, CENTCOM. This is all the communication about the movements of the United States military uh, in the world. We told you that the USS Gerald Ford Carrier Strike Group was going where? To Israel, right. So there it is. There's the USS Gerald Ford uh, Strike Group. There's another strike group and other uh, ships that have joined them. They are in the Mediterranean. They're parked in the Mediterranean. Uh, another thing you need to pay attention to, again, we're talking about the potential for escalation. CENTCOM put this out, that Commander General Michael Carrilla, one of the most, one of the most intelligent war, uh, <laughs> war theologians, if you will. This right. man knows he war knows stuff. like the back of his hand. All the way back to Bosnia, he's been a part of, of major conflicts and every major conflict since then. And he is in Israel today. He is meeting with the top leadership of the IDF. And it's another way that the United States is partnering with Israel to help plan whatever that attack will be against Hamas in Gaza. You've seen your Secretary of State there, Antony Blinken. And there's something that you need to see about his trip. He didn't just go to Israel. No, he did not. He went to the United Arab Emirates as well. And while he was in Dubai, he took the trip down to Abu Dhabi, and he is inside, this is just a few days ago, your Secretary of State, he's inside the Abrahamic house where Pastor Ralph and I were just a, a, a last year, uh, where there is a platform, the Abrahamic house that has a, a Muslim mosque, a Jewish synagogue, and a church, a Catholic church. And he visited that Abrahamic house that is now open uh, to show solidarity uh, not just with the Jews and the Christians, but also with the Muslims. And they invited him to be a part of that. It's, it's all things that we've been talking about for over a year and a half now, all of a sudden are in the news. And we're talking about the potential second front of the Third World War. Because as we sit here today, not only do we have the conflict in Israel, but Russia is still waging war on the Ukraine. Uh, everything on that side of the globe is completely totally unhinged today, more so than it has been in a very, very long time. Well, something else happened yesterday. Not only did Blinken go to these uh, three houses of religion, but that was sign out front, the World Religion Center, and that it's time to be one. Well, who was there right before we got there in March? The Pope of Rome was right. there. And he said it's time to come together, and he embraced the Iman, We've got a picture of that somewhere in our file. And so what did the Vatican say Monday? The Vatican said, we're willing to bring the warring parties together and we'll bring peace. We'll be the mitigator right. of the, uh, or the one that will resolve this issue and bring peace to the Middle East. So you're seeing all of these prophecies explode right in your world today. So the United States has a huge representation in the Mediterranean. 2,000 strike force Marines are somewhere in Israel on the ground, 2,000 of our troops. Uh, and they, it's been said that they will not be used to be part of the assault, but they're there just in case. I, I can't imagine that we're going to sit out while American uh, citizens are held hostage in, in, no. in Gaza. I, I would prefer that we did. We have capability as a country to go get our, our countrymen back. We'll get our own and people. We ought to be shoulder to shoulder with the IDF. Uh, destroying Hamas and getting our people back. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So potential for escalation. That's what we're talking about. The Secretary of State is there. He's making his trips. Here you have your president, Joseph Biden. He's there. And let me help you with something. And this is going to this is going to help you. We say, well, we know why Biden's doing this. Uh, he, he doesn't represent our values. And we know that he's doing this for 
a political stunt and, and he's moving troops for a political stunt and he's interested in votes, let him do whatever he can to help the IDF, to help Israel. And if he wants to make it a political stunt, a, a political statement, that's fine. Just that's keep helping Israel. That's I don't care if it's a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. That is the way we have to assess that. Thank God. He's, he, Joseph R. Biden is a, is a puppet on the string of God's sovereign hand. Amen? Amen. And if God wants to send the United States military to back up his chosen people, guess what he'll do? He'll put it in the heart of, of a liberal Democrat from Washington, D.C. to do so. That's how our biblical perspective helps us look at this, okay? And Strike Force Eisenhower's on the way as well. There's a lot of firepower yep. in, in so the Mediterranean. two carrier groups going here. So there's something building. And like I said earlier, you've got to go back to October 7. There are more Americans died that day by terrorism than any time since 9-11. We're obligated as a nation to go get our own people. Let's do it. Israel, they may waffle between what to do and political, but America doesn't have to do that. We can go get our people, and we don't believe in leaving anybody behind, and I encourage our leadership, our national leadership, and I encourage our congressmen and our senators to put the heat on the president. Go bring our people home. Amen. 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 All right, the last, uh, last few things we'll talk about here before we break. Uh, do you have a few more minutes left in you? All right, take a deep breath and let's get all of this in, okay? Let's talk about the political war on Israel. Now, this is a great example. This is fresh that just happened yesterday. A terrible, terrible, terrible thing happened at the Baptist Hospital in Gaza. Right. Uh, hundreds of people, more than likely close to 500 people that were seeking refuge. Okay, think of this now. They're seeking refuge around the courtyard of the hospital. I have looked at all the pictures released by both Hamas, the IDF, and the international journalist community that's there. Right. And what, you're seeing, it, what you're seeing is that the folks that were inside the courtyard, the, the, the vestibule, if you will, of the, the hospital who were seeking refuge, that's where most of the death came from. Yes, the hospital was damaged, but most of the damage was outside. Now, here's how you can know this is the most blatant thing. And, and let me stop right here and say this, and I want to say this clearly. We do not celebrate the death of any innocent life. That's not Christian. No, not one. That's not Christian. I do not want one innocent Palestinian civilian to lose their life. I don't want one child to be killed in crossfire. I don't want one grandmother to, to lose her home uh, because of misfire or uh, any war operation. But I will say this, war is attributed by those that have fought it. Their testimony is, it's the closest thing that I can describe to what? Hell. Yeah. It's hell. And it's terrible, the things that are happening. But instantly, as soon as this atrocity happened, 500 civilians who were seeking refuge at a hospital were killed. What did the international media community do? They went after Israel. Here's, here's a screen grab that I have for you to show you. This is CNN, the Wall Street Journal, Al Jazeera English, BBC News World, Associated Press, the New York Times, and the Los Angeles Times. And within just a few hours of that atrocity being reported, the headlines read, hundreds killed in Israeli strike on Gaza hospital. Instantly, before we checked any facts, before anybody had an opportunity to speak, we're publishing a, a, a firestorm of a story that Israel dropped a bomb from the sky and that they killed those 500 people at the hospital. Okay, so that's published. Speaking words and publishing things online is like getting toothpaste out of a tube. Right. Once you squirt the toothpaste out, it's out. You can't get it back in. Trying to get it back in does what? Makes a big mess. Makes a mess. You're not going to get it back. And so now, after hours of, of going through footage and opinion and weeding through things that, are, that were not real, there was a gentleman who, who posted a, 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 a video proving that it was an American-made JDAM bomb that hit this hospital. 
I submit to you, if you'll go back and look at all of the war footage from Afghanistan and from Iraq, if a JDAM would have hit in the courtyard of that hospital, that hospital would cease to exist. Be there wouldn't be anything. Put an, um, elephant right. In. So that's not what we see in the pictures. Now, here is some video that I want to show you. These are the rockets being fired to your, to your screens right there. Rockets being fired from Islamic Jihad. They misfire on the way to Israel and they land there at the hospital. This video is coming from a, a daycare in one of the kibbutz uh, on the other side of Gaza. So this is a video from Israel recording towards Gaza. Let's play it again. I want you to see it. Let me go back one. The rockets are fired. They're making their way towards Israel. So they have a few minutes to travel. But all of a sudden, while they're traveling in the air, an explosion in Gaza. It's time stamp at the exact same time that the hospital was attacked. But here's the problem. This is already out. Right. Hundreds killed in Israeli strike on Gaza hospital. No wonder we cannot contain the hate and the vitriol because the, the, the media, the, the journalist community has got to do a better job of reporting the facts. Here's more proof. These are all time stamped. More proof, video evidence, independently verified that 100% Hamas, Islamic Jihad, they fired the rockets. Right. There they go, fired. See them? Same time stamp. And, and then the explosion and blew up. inside of Gaza itself. Those rockets never made it into Israel. Instead, they killed their own people at the Baptist hospital. Okay? If that's not proof enough, here's the explosion, the rocket's coming in. And then the Baptist hospital, 500 people are getting ready to go into eternity right here. There it is. Right. If that's not proof enough, here is the Mossad, the Israeli intelligence service. They are recording every cell phone conversation and have the capability to do so, especially folks that they have on a watch list. I want you to listen to this and read the lyrics, read the transcript. That's why we are saying it belongs to Palestinian Islamic Jihad. They are saying it belongs to Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Is it from us, he asks? It looks like it. Who says this? They're saying that the shrapnel from the, the missile is local shrapnel and not like Israel's shrapnel. What are you saying? And he realizes they've killed their own people. God bless it. Couldn't it have found another place to explode? Never mind, yes, they shot it from the cemetery behind the hospital. What? They shot it coming from the cemetery behind the hospital. It misfired and fell on them. So there you have it. This is a great example. The New York Times, these are screen grabs over a few hours. If you'll go to the far left, Israel strike kills hundreds in hospital, Palestinians say. The middle one, at least 500 dead in strike on Gaza hospital. And then the third one, at least 500 dead in blast at Gaza hospital. You, again, it's toothpaste. You've already posted that Israel striked the hospital. We, it's, it's part of that political war on Israel uh, that within the international community itself, it has to defend itself on multiple, multiple fronts. And they republish the lie. And they tell the lie over again. So once that's on the street to the teenagers and the young adults, then you kill 500 of our babies, you kill 500 of our women, then you, if you come back and say, here's the proof, they say, well, you made that up. You, you, uh, you know, you Photoshopped that. And so it's an un believable predicament that we've got Israel in and what can happen out of this one incident is they can put the restraints on Israel to quit, right. don't go after Hamas, leave it alone and make a political deal and that will be suicide for them and that's what Hezbollah is doing. Right. All right. This is the last thing we'll discuss today. Just a few more minutes and we'll wrap this up. 
but I want to talk to you for just a second about Hamas, okay? Pastor Ralph just did a great in-depth study with the, the maps and gave you a better understanding. Let's add one more little layer and a cherry on top of this entire thing, okay? Remember, the whole point of this is us being better students, more equipped with a biblical perspective, right? right. We want to understand the world going on around us, but through the lens of the Word of God. Here is the logo, the official logo of Hamas. Notice what's in the middle there. What is that? Those that have been to Israel or know, what, what is that there in the middle? It's the, it's the gold dome. It's the dome of the rock. It, it, this is about, understand, this at the end of the day is all about Jerusalem. All the way. Control of all of Israel's territory. Now, Hamas... H-A-M-A-S is an acronym. I'm going to do my best to give you the acronym in Arabic. It's Hakarat al-Mugamwa al-Islamiya, which means in Arabic, Islamic Resistance Movement. Okay, that's the Arabic uh, acronym. Hakarat al-Mugawama al-Islamiya. It was founded by Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, a Palestinian cleric who studied in Cairo, Egypt. He was a devout, devout Palestinian Muslim and he created Hamas. Now, if I go back to what Hamas did on October the 7th, there's one word that captivates my heart, and that's violence. Absolutely. It was all about violence. Pastor Ralph talked about that in his study a few moments ago. If I go back to Genesis, and I go back to Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 11. Read this verse with me. It says, The earth, was, the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with what? Violence. violence. So this violence that God eventually judged the entire world, how? In Genesis. How was the world judged? In a flood. So this is, this is talking about the times of Noah. Filled with violence. It's corruption. It's hatred. And what it is, at the end of the day, this is your first peek in Genesis chapter 6 into the spirit of of anti-Christ, right. anti-God. It's the opposite. It's the, it's the reciprocating opposite of who God is. Violence, corruption, and hatred. The spirit of the anti-Christ and anti-God. Hamas, it's a Hebrew word. There is a Hebrew word, Hamas, that does not, listen to this, that does not relate to the Arabic acronym for the Islamic resistance in Palestine. Right. But this word Hamas, uh, this word that we'll find in Hebrew in a moment, it has to do, all of this has to do, the violence that Genesis 6 is talking about with possession. We're talking about demonic possession. It's evil, it's wickedness. And what it is, it's the seed of Satan. The fallen rejectors of God, deceitful and destruct, destructive, dominating the world. That's what was going on in the days of Noah. That's why God judged the earth. Now, this is from this morning, okay? I, I, I grabbed the screenshot and I want to show it to you now. If I take that Genesis 6.11 and I take the, the, the Hebrew lexicon right. and I look at Hebrew 25.55, the, the word that's used to describe all of those characteristics of evil, violence, hatred, there's a word in Hebrew. What's that word out there to the far right? Hamas. Hamas. The Hebrew word to describe what is found in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 11, that word violence, look here, the, the, the words that it gives, violence, violent, cruelty, wrong, false, cruel, damage, injustice, oppressor, unrighteous. It all falls under the definition that you'll find in the Torah, Shemak or Yalmas. Hebrew 25, 54. But all of those put together, the, the meaning, the lexicon of that word is Hebrew 25, 55, Hamas. That's what it is. So your Bible ha has a word in it already for what we are experiencing. Now you say, is there a direct connection? Is, is the Bible talking about this one group, this one Hamas group? No, but isn't it amazing that the Hebrew word in the original text describes perfectly who Hamas is. They are violent, they are vengeful, they are evil, and they are possessed with a true evil, demonic activity that lives on the inside of them. That's the only way you can describe going into an Israeli home, a Jewish home, and murdering children and old ladies and old men just for simply living. 
It's, it's Hamas. There's no other way to put it in words. It's Hamas. And that Hamas, uh, that violence, it was so horrible in Genesis 6 that God judged the world. Yes. And God's getting ready to judge the world again. So what does that mean? And Pastor Ralph has taught us this. It's good versus evil. It's God versus Satan. It's Christ versus Antichrist. But today I want you to change one of those words. It's Holy Spirit versus Hamas. Hamas. It's not Hamas, just the group. It's the entire thing that we've been preaching now for years. It's in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. You want to put all of that into one word? Hamas. Hamas. Violence, evil, wickedness. This is more proof for you, the Bible believer, that what you are seeing is a physical manifestation of a spiritual war that, that it's hard for us to really understand fully. But, but here's what I know. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm waiting for glorification. And I believe with all of my heart that at any moment, any moment, God the Father could look at the archangel Amen. and say, I've had enough of this. Go and let my son fetch his bride. This is a wonderful time to know that you know that your name's been recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Pastor Ralph, one question that was asked of me yesterday, will Israel survive? Israel will Israel will survive? survive? The answer is yes. Yes. We talked about this Sunday morning in that message, Romans eleven twenty six. I will not take the time to go into all of this. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is after the tribulation, the Jews that are left, God guarantees them salvation. If there will be a remnant after the tribulation, I'm not living in the tribulation. I'm not living in the tribulation. Nope. I'm not living in the tribulation. So what does that mean? That Israel will survive. They will Absolutely survive. guaranteed they will survive. And what God's given all of this to put together to the church family, to the friends on the internet and watching, uh, and all the churches and all the pastors studying with us, is that God's saying, pay attention to the prophetic signs yes. that Jesus is coming. And if you remember in Isaiah 7, 14, you remember what Jesus did? He rebuked the Pharisees for not paying attention to the prophets, what they had written about the signs of the times. And for them not recognizing and understanding the prophetic sign of the Messiah's first coming. And now God's given us all this to realize he's coming again. Amen. And that same Jesus you saw go up, that same Jesus is coming back. And he said, and when you see all these things, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And it's an exciting time to be a Bible believer. Israel will survive. And I got some other good news. The church will survive. Amen. We are going to be cared for in the hands of a holy God. We are the bride of the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a great time to be a believer and a student of the word. Let's close with a little positive. And I think the greatest positive we can, we can say of this specific conflict in Israel is that you are seeing a resilient Israeli people and a resilient Jewish people once again. Uh, I found this uh, doing some research the other day, brought tears to my eyes, but Remember, if you're over the age of 18, you have to do two years of service. Okay, two years of service. It would be a wonderful thing to happen here. Right. Two years of service in the military. You fall in love with your country. You get good training. You learn how to shoot. You learn how to be a tactical, ta a tactical citizen. It's a great idea. A mother had her two daughters and her son called up as reservists. And before they left, I want you to see what she's doing. She's telling them goodbye. She takes her Torah and she puts it on top of their head, takes the Bible and blesses her children as they're getting ready to go to battle to report her two daughters. And then here's her son blessing them before they go. There they go with their bags going to answer the call. Just young ladies. They greet each other and they leave. And in the south of Israel, the IDF posted this, something that speaks to our heart as believers. We understand how important and significant the shofar is. But make sure the volume's up good, guys. I want them to be able to hear this. 
This is the shofar and being you blown. You've got to remind them before they blow that shofar, there's three times the Jews pick it up to blow it. One is to go worship God. Two is to take up your tent. We're going to the promised land. The third one, go to war. What day did he blow it? He blew that on Sukkot, the day, October the 7th, of the attack. Israel will survive. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We are blessed beyond measure. And God's put us together to study the Word. And this is a time for you to be knowledgeable. It's a time for you to pray. It's a time to pray for your family. It's time to be faithful to your local church. It's time to be loving and loyal to the cause of Christ and stand behind your pastor and say, we are not going to be distracted. We're not going to be divided. We're not going to be discouraged. We're going to be salt and light for this generation. Amen. And God has given us this opportunity to do just that. Father, bless the word. Bless the reading and study of your word. Unite us in heart and strength. And we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen.